everybody, it's Brian, and welcome to the 13th Y2 tutorial. Um, we are going to be switching things up a little bit. We've been working with, uh, what was it, Pet Store, and admittedly, I hated the design. So I'm also a big fan of learning by doing, and I've had a lot of good feedback on my Facebook channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually build a website from start to finish. And here's kind of our, our curriculum, if you will. Um, haven't actually counted these up. This probably isn't even the end, but we're going to start tonight with the uh, database design, actually building the web app, and if we have time, going into GI, although I've got a feeling that may actually be the second tutorial. We'll find out. Um, all the way up to like actually sending emails and registration and, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So what is the purpose of this site? What's it going to do? Let's pull up our database here we're going to make yet another blog site. Um, it's a really good example because it allows you to do data entry, you know, because you need more data entry in your life. Anyways, no, really what we've got is we're going to have accounts. And let me actually pull that up here. So people can join your site. And when they join, it will create an account. We've got our auth key and access token, which is going to be needed by the e security model. And they'll join with an email and password. And then we have a little bit flag in here called registered, meaning they're going to have to actually register. They can't just join. So when they join, an email is going to get kicked out. They're going to have to click a link. It'll go back into your Yee site, and it'll register them in the database. Very simple database design. It just has accounts, blogs, and categories. So the premise of this is that they can go in and create their own categories. Let me look at this. Categories, dead simple. I mean, just you've got a foreign key to the accounts which is set to cascade. So if they delete their account, all the categories they create are deleted with it. Same thing with blogs. Da, 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 alter table here. Got a foreign key to accounts set to cascade. So when they delete their account, all their blogs are also deleted. We've got a bit field called publish. So until they actually publish it, it won't be you know publicly searchable. And just a date publish, the title, and then the body. So it's very, very simple database design. Um, I wanted it simple because, well, Simple's good, and we're focused on ye, not database design. So, if you need to view that again, just rewind the video. But that's our database setup, and I'll try to put the actual SQL dump out on my website as well. So we're going to just dump or dump, geez, jump right in here. This is my var www html directory. As you can see, I've got a couple other websites out there. Um, we are going to actually go in and create using Composer. <laughs> oh my god, my cat hears me talking. Now if you remember from previous tutorials here, that command out on their website actually does not work for me. If I do php composer.phr, it doesn't work because I've done the global installation. So I'm going to say composer and you'll see how it works for me. See, ta-da, composer. So. Let me bring this up. I'm going to actually grab this, copy that. I'm going to go CD because I'm going to change directory here. And we're going to go in there. And then I'm just going to go composer, poser. God, I cannot spell composer. I've been in. Uh, I make C++ tutorials with Qt. Um, some of you may have watched them. And uh, I've been thinking in purely C++ for like weeks now, so my brain's a little stuck. So what this does, um, if you're just now tuning in, we've covered this before, is Composer will go out and it will create a project using the EESoft E2 app basic. And we're going to name this Blogger. And we're going to use the 2.07 build. And we're going to get some warnings here. And this is going to take a little bit of time. So just fast forward through this because I really am horrible about video editing. So I'm not going to like stop time and re-edit the video and all that. We're just going to wait for this to go. And if you don't like it, fast forward. All right. So let's, I got to keep you entertained while this is downloading. So some of the things that I really want to cover with this is um, the user form. How to join somebody to your website. And then... We have to test that, right? Because there's a whole process. The user's going to come. They're going to click join. They're going to enter their your email and password. And then you're going to create a record. We're going to kick out an email. So we have to you know, learn how to set up email. 
email has its own special views and way of doing things. And then we have to actually send the email. We have to do error handling. That's important. Email and ye is pretty straightforward, but there's some caveats we really got to understand. Then we got to do things like account activation. Um, we got to have a model for that, obviously. Um, we need to have, like, you know, changing their information, their username, their email, their password. And I'm going to break those up into separate pages just so it's nice and pretty for the end user. Then categories. I mean, this is mostly GUI stuff, right? We're going to say categories. They're going to be able to manage it, which is, you know, the CRUD. They're going to go in, they're going to add, edit, delete, etc., etc. Same thing with blogs. Um, categories have to come before blogs because, well, you got to build the categories. Um, the search method is going to be kind of towards the end. That's where we have publicly available searches. All right, so we are done there. Let me, now that I'm sitting here talking, let's actually make sure our database is what we wanted it to be. Yeah, see, I don't have a category in here. Grr. Gonna have to do a little bit of database maintenance here. All right, so we're gonna put that here. Notice how it has to be a big end if we're gonna relate to the other keys. Um, it doesn't have to be a big end; it just has to match the keys. Yeah, as I was talking, I was like, man, I think I screwed that up. So, category, categories, and we're going to cascade because if they delete a category, we want to delete all the blogs that are in that category. Because why not? Close. All right, good. So now we've got our foreign key relationships here. And MySQL's been a bit glitchy, so I always like to just go back in there and just view everything and make sure it actually stayed. I had a separate project I was working on where I was working away and everything was fine, and then all of a sudden, none of the changes that I made saved. I was so mad. I was so mad that, you know, I went and had a rum and coke and played video games for five hours, because why not? All right, so what we want to do now is verify that blogger actually did get created which it did we can if you're not liking the command line you can go out and see it now from previous tutorials you know that if we go in and directly start using GUI, we're gonna get read write errors so what I like to do and this is not best practice I'm gonna stress that I do this strictly in development okay I change the owner What I'm doing now is I'm just simply giving it a group, right? There, dub dub dub, HTML, blogger, and then I'm going to do it recursively. So we're going to just, whoopsie, yeah, not permitted. We should probably do a sudo. Forgot about that. All right, good. So clear all that nonsense out of there. And then we're going to change the mode, or change mod, as you call it. I'm going to do user group other. This is a huge security violation. Do never, never, ever do this in production. Repeat after me, never, ever, ever do this in production. Um, so what do you do in production if this is not the correct thing? Well, that's a good, good question to ask. I would rely on your internet provider, or your ISP, or your web provider, whoever is your host. They can set the permissions. I'm Honestly, not off the top of my head, I don't remember exactly what they're supposed to be, but typically when you go to like a uh, GoDaddy or a HostGator or one of those, um, the permissions are pretty much already set for you, so you don't really have to worry about that too much. Um, but just never do that in prod. I do this in dev just because I get sick of dealing with permissions issues and all that garbage, so we are going to now go into, whoops, here. We're going to open our project. And we want to just open Blogger. And first thing we really want to do here is get our database connection up and going. You notice how it's set to root? Eep. Security violation, do not do that. Blobber, no, it's not Blobber, it's Blogger. Actually, we better double check that. I don't remember what I named that. And it's a capital B, not a lowercase. So we don't want to connect as root. That's a massive security violation. So we want to go in here and we want to actually add a user. And see there's our pet store user right here. 
we're going to add an account. We're going to call this Blogger Web. Give it an ultra secure password here. Once again, never do that in Prod. This is strictly dev. Um, this website will never live outside of my machine. So we've got Blogger. Um, if you're wondering what that percent sign is, it's um, for host matching, um, what host can connect to this thing. Typically in a prod, you'll never do this. This is all done on the back end. You'll use cPanel or something like that, which I may actually do a cPanel tutorial sometime in the future. But All right, so we want to grab that username. And we want to, whoops, want to put our ultra secure password in there save that and I'm really happy that they split this up in the re 1.1 this was all one giant config so every time you went from dev to prod you had to mod modify your config it was a royal pain in the butt alright so we've got that let me grab this little guy And where's Blogger? I'm not seeing him here. Oh, way at the bottom. All right, so we're going to go to web, and ta-da, there's our little, our website in all its glory so far. And we've got our little, you know, ye debugging bar down here. And we're going to just click about, and then we're going to go to gee, because why not? And we want to actually generate our models. Oh, access denied. What is this? Hmm, access denied. See, some you guys, some of you folks love it when I do these in real time, but it's a royal pain because then I gotta figure out what I did wrong here. Account limits. Oh, I bet I know what I did wrong. We're missing our administrative roles. We're just gonna say, wham, you can do everything. Why not? And I'm gonna just verify with this. Schema privileges. What? What did I do there? Hmm. I'm not an expert in MySQL and I'm wondering why this is here. But it's not here. Let's try add entry. Let's try all schema. Why not? Hmm. Let's just give it everything because we're in dev and I want to be able to do every little nick and cranny thing, even though this is a massive security violation. We could have very easily just, you know, checked all, but why not? Alright, so we're in dev, we want everything. Once again, don't do that in prod. Follow the official hardening guide for servers if you're going to do anything in prod. Okay, we're going to go back here. Magically it works. All right, so I think that's why some people like it when I do these in real time, because you'll be at home and you'll try doing what I do, and you go, well, I got this error message, and you got to Google it. And All right, so we're just going to generate some models here. We're putting in star. If that is very tiny, it's asterisk. It's, it's just shift eight. It's the wild card. And then we're going to go preview, and voila, there's our three beautiful models here. We're going to generate. Notice how it's successful. If you skipped the change own and change mode uh, in the very beginning of this, you're probably going to get an access denied or a read write violation or something along those lines. So we'll go back out to our beautiful little website here, and ta-da, there's our models. I always like to go in and verify. Um, I don't know if it's specific to the version that I was using, but there was a bug in E2 where it was not doing my relations for some reason, and it would just drove me crazy because I had to go in there and put them in myself. So I always kind of, if you see a has one or has many, then you know you're good. All right, we got our user model. We're going to actually uh, inherit that. This is how we would actually log in with Yee, which is in a future tutorial. So we're going to... Let me check the time here. Um, YouTube gets kind of cranky when I go over a certain time limit. Okay, I think we're good for now. Um, let's go ahead and generate some crud here. App models, accounts. Oh, yep, forgot that. Still pulling up all the stuff from the pet shop that we had. Alright, 
right so now we're going to just generate our accounts here and then what do we want uh, categories My only real pet peeve about E2 is that you got to do the full path. It's not like E1 where you could just put a name and it would figure everything out for you. Oh, yep, yeah, it's already complaining. I'm guessing it's category, not categories. And we're just going to generate that. And then was our other table? I think it was just blogs. Yeah, it's blogs. And we're going to generate that. There we go. And we're just going to go out to our website here. I'm already in the website. Derp. And we're going to go here, and we're just going to create a route, and we're going to go blogs. All right, so that's there. Let's look at accounts. We're going to heavily modify accounts in the future tutorial, because obviously every user doesn't want to see accounts. And then what was the other one? Category. So we have now successfully created all our models, all our CRUD, our basic web structure um, connected to the database and well set permissions incorrectly I might add never do that in prod um, you should just like tattoo that on the back of your hand never do that in prod alright so I think that's gonna be it for this tutorial um, future tutorials we're gonna really dive into this thing really deeply and we're gonna just we're gonna build a website um, so I'm gonna put this on the screen just as kind of a lasting image um, this is kind of the direction I'm taking. I look forward to your feedback here, though. Um, so if you see something missing, or if you say, "Hey, you know, let's you know do this before that," let me know um, either via email or preferably in the uh, Void Realms Facebook group. If you go to Void Realms, you go to Contact. There's a Facebook group with I think I lost count of how many people we got in there. Lots, hundred, literally hundreds of programmers in there from all different languages. And they just help each other out. So. That's kind of creepy where it's like cutting my face off, but whatever. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this educational and entertaining, and uh, let me know.